What's up guys? This is Manoj Shuptani. I welcome you all on behalf of the IDpedia world. So, it's been the second presentation wherein I'll be discussing with you the topics relating to the Insurance Act 1938. In my first presentation, I did discuss with you about various kind of definitions and the various terminology that you will be like finding it across the complete chapter at various instances. So, that was something about the brief which I covered in my last presentation. Now I'll be discussing with you some of the more relevant topics relating to this particular act. So are you like honoring your word? That is for making and completing your regular revisions. That's extremely kind of a necessary step, guys. You can't ignore that. You need to revise your topics time and again because that, that is something which just cannot be escaped in any case. So in order to ensure that you guys don't flunk in your CA final examination, that's necessary for you guys to take into account without a delay. So, are you guys all set? First up your seatbelts, we are about to take off with complete enthusiasm and excitement with the first topic of the day and that will be the registration of insurers. It has been mentioned under section 3 of the Insurance Act 1938. First of all, let's suppose you are a person, okay, and you want to take up insurance business. You want to start your insurance business. So, what do you require? You can start it as soon as you think about it. Absolutely not. You need to undergo some of the formalities you need to undergo some of the registration documentary uh, kind of stuff documentation which is absolutely necessary to make you bring in into a position wherein you'll be able to call yourself a insurer or i should say better into uh, insurance business so there is something which needs to be done for each and every kind of person uh, by person i simply mean about those companies uh, those firms uh, who want to take up uh, as a business of insurance so Number one thing, the beginning will mark with the registration. Obviously, registration is extremely necessary for each and every kind of stuff. So, what is what all will be like reading and understanding in this particular segment? So, let's mark the beginning with the first point, and that will be the prohibition of carrying on the insurance business unless registered. So, that is something which I just told you up. So, once, if in case you are not registered under the Insurance Act, uh, and by uh, you didn't get that license under section 42 in that particular case you'll be prohibited to take up or carry any of your insurance business unless you are registered this thing has been mentioned under section 3 subsection 1 so no person shall begin to carry on any class of insurance business be it any in India unless he has obtained from the authority by authority, I simply mean that IRDA, the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority, a certificate of registration for the particular class of insurance business. Now, let's suppose you take up the certificate for insurance business. Can you take up and start up uh, this uh, marine insurance as and when you want? No, you can't do so. So, you need to take up that certificate of registration for each and every kind of particular class of insurance business that you want to take up. Unless and by the time you didn't uh, got an opportunity to uh, have that certificate of registration, each and every kind of act of carrying on uh, insurance business is prohibited. So that is something pretty much clear to all of you. Perfect. Now the second thing, grant of certificate of registration. This thing has been explained under section 3, subsection 2A. Once uh, the person, the authority, that is IRD, once they'll receive the application of your registration. Okay. And after making such inquiry, whatever they think fit, okay, they need to have the authority and they need to have that kind of uh, inquiry done on your behalf, whether you are capable enough to run any kind of insurance business in India or not. So they'll make some of the inquiry. So once they'll receive that application of yours for registration, making it registered, and then after making that particular inquiry, whether you uh, are a fit person for carrying on the insurance business or not, then the IRDA may register you as an applicant as an insurer and will grant you a certificate of registration so this thing has been mentioned under section 3 subsection 2a on receipt of an application for registration and after making such inquiry as the authority deems fit the authority may register the applicant as an insurer and grant him or her a certificate of registration i hope that's pretty much clear to each one of you perfect number three refusal Let's suppose something uh, mishap happens in your uh, uh, in the course of getting uh, you the registration certificate and uh, 
the authority may not find uh, you to be a fit person and they refuse your registration so what's the procedure in that particular case so this thing has been mentioned under section 3 subsection 2b so where the authority refuses registration they shall record the reasons for such decision and shall furnish a copy to you that means the applicant accordingly so they will record each and every kind of reason as to why they have made such kind of decision why they are not willing to provide you the registration and they, sh they shall furnish a copy of that particular decision to you because you are the applicant and you need to hold that so now uh, you just uh, you have an option okay uh, you just take that refusal for registration uh, letter and keep it in your pocket and just leave other thing that you have is obviously you'll be like getting aggrieved with the fact okay why they haven't provided me the registration why dude I'm such a capable guy I can take up the insurance business very well who are they to stop me obviously you'll get that kind of uh, mindset in your uh, thinking wherein you'll be like having uh, this kind of stuff and you'll be aggrieved with the decision they made against you so what are your resort in that case obviously the government is sharp enough and the government is uh, like sensitive enough to all those applicants so they have provided you an option what you if in case you are aggrieved by the decision of the authority refusing your registration then in that case you may file an appeal to the central government okay within 30 days from the date on which that copy of decision is received by you okay you need to make that application of uh, appeal basically to the central government within 30 days from the date on which the copy of decision is received by you so cheers to you hip hooray if in case you don't get the registration don't lose your hope don't get disappointed with the fact go and appeal against the order of that refusal that this thing has been like covered under section 3 subsection 2c now coming to the final part that is about the order okay order of CG to be fine remember this thing guys if in case you did made an appeal to the central government so whatever the kind of decision now central government is going to take that will be the binding one the final one and this cannot be questioned in any of the court any court I'm telling you so order of CG is treated to be the final decision of central government on such appeal shall be final and shall not be questioned before any court this thing has been mentioned under section uh, 3 subsection 2 D that's about like half of the portion relating to registration of insurers this was all about the registration of insurers I hope you guys got the complete clarity with respect to each and every provision that I made you understand perfect guys let's move towards the continuing segment of registration of insurers so this is about the cancellation okay now you got registered okay so but somehow you are just not able to like comply with each and every kind of requirement each and every, each and every kind of condition that was imposed for you by the IRDA act or by uh, IRDA as an authority they provided you some of the guidelines so you did uh, you didn't followed or complied with each one of them so what and the what kind of scenarios IRDA can cancel your registration as an insurer this thing has been like mentioned under section 3 subsection 4 what are those instances of cancellation so the authority that is the IRDA shall cancel the registration of the insurer either wholly or insofar it relates to a particular class of insurance business they may wish to like completely uh, cancel your license or they may wish to like cancel your license partly in just terms of some of the particular insurance business maybe fire maybe marine maybe life insurance depending so number one instance is that if in case you as an insurer fails to comply with the provisions of section 7 and section 98 as to deposits so uh, you'll be reading and I'll, I'll make you understand this uh, section 7 in my forthcoming presentation you'll get to know what uh, what all things I'll be like telling you up uh, as far as section 7 is concerned that is something which is relating to deposits so as an insurance business uh, you need to have your deposits made uh, on timely basis why because you need to ensure that are you like capable enough to settle your liabilities on time or not so you need to make uh, some of the deposits okay so if in case you fail in that particular compliance so in that case your registration can be cancelled by IRDA number two if in case you as an insurer okay you fail at any moment of time to comply with the provisions of section 64 VA okay 
that's about something related to as to excess of the value of your asset over the amount of your liabilities so if in any case somehow your liabilities get uh, exceed your assets so in that particular case and you fail to comply with any of the provisions which have been mentioned under section 64 ba then again your registration can be cancelled by irda number third is if you as an insurer are have underwent into some of the liquidation insurer is in liquidation your business is in liquidation or you have been like ad adjusted as an insolvent you can't pay back money to the policy holders then in that case again your registration can be cancelled or number 4 is your transfer let's suppose uh, you had your business but now that business has been like transferred to another insurance company you have completely transferred your business so what would what would you do now nothing so cancel your registration simple you have transferred your business or in case your business have been like amalgamated with another business okay so if the business or a class of business of the insurer has been transferred to any person or has been transferred to or amalgamated with another business of the insurer then uh, your registration can be cancelled in that particular case number 5 is deposit returned to insurer under section 9 so if in case whole of the deposit which has been made i'm talking about whole not partly so if in case whole of the deposit made in respect of the insurance business has been returned to the insurer under section 9 then in that case since the complete deposit has been returned to the insurance business now i don't think so that you will be able to can continue that particular business anymore so the iida has a willful right to cancel your registration in any case next will be the default in compliance with any of the requirement so if the insurer makes default in complying with any of the contravention of any of the provisions of the act with any of the requirements of the act or any rule regulation order made or any kind of direction which have been like issued if in case you make a default in complying with those then in that particular case uh, the irda is free to cancel your registration at any moment of time next the claim unpaid for 3 months so now if in case irda has a reason to believe that any claim upon the insurer that is you uh, is particularly arising in india under any policy of insurance which remains unpaid for 3 months after the final judgment in the course of law then irda is like having stringent norms for that particular case wherein the decision has already been made by the court by ID, irda authority and still the claim is unpaid you have still not paid to the policy holder then in that case your registration can be cancelled at any point of time okay next will be carrying on of any other business any business other than insurance business if you as an insurer carry on any business other than the insurance business that has been specified or prescribed then again this irda has a right to cancel your registration at any point of time the the irda act is like pretty much clear with the fact that if you are running insurance business kindly stick to that don't enter or carry on any other business okay so they want your focus to remain in that insurance business itself so they can cancel your registration at any moment of time now lastly if in case you make any kind of default in complying with any of the directions issued order made by the authority that is the irda or if in case you make any of the default in complying with any of the act or requirement of companies act life insurance act general insurance business act or foreign exchange management act then again IRDA has a right to cancel your registration at any point of time these are the instances wherein your registration can be cancelled so and i'm sure that you guys got the complete clarity with respect to each and every provision over here perfect guys let's move towards the last thing which will be relating towards registration of insurance and that will be prohibition on entering new contracts of insurance after cancellation so remember here's a catch and here's a caution catch for it so if in case where your registration has been cancelled then you after the cancellation has taken effect cannot i'm saying cannot enter into any of the new contracts of insurance you just cannot enter okay but having said that all those rights and liabilities in respect of contracts of insurance that have been entered into by you before such cancellation they shall continue as if cancellation has not taken place that simply means you entered into any of the contract before your uh, uh, registration got cancelled 
now you have to abide by all those contracts you need to pay those people okay and if in case you were about to receive some of the payment before uh, your registration got cancelled you are still entitled to receive that payment so whatever which have whichever kind of contract or whatever thing which have happened before the registration getting cancelled that will still be in place but you just can't enter into any of the new contracts of insurance once there has been prohibition being made or your registration has been cancelled i hope this thing is pretty much clear to all of you this thing has been mentioned under section 3 subsection 5b can we move proceed with that okay guys let's move towards the next topic and that will be on restriction on the name of insurer this thing has been mentioned under section 5 so what all has been like specified under this act with respect to the restriction on name of insurer okay so guys you need to understand one thing in your life that uh, if you are running any of the business why do people like try to insure that uh, the kind of business name that they are they are keeping for their business shouldn't be same at all with any of the business who which has been like existing in the world so far why because they want to give their business a unique name okay which is just not available in the market so why it's being done that's basically done to avoid any kind of problem with respect to any of the name the kind of uh, forgery issue or any other issue wherein uh, the other person can make a claim on you that you have uh, used my name in order to run your own business so this is something which uh, each and every kind of organization and each and every kind of authority also knows it okay so whether you go for sebi whether you go for listing of your company they usually ask you up okay kindly send us six names or eight names or 10 names out of the name you can se- select uh, any of them okay but if in case that similar or identical to any of the existing kind of company then you should not try to get into that kind of world why because that's still available with one of the company and they are associated with that name so you shouldn't get or take that name so similar kind of restrictions have like also been imposed by ird now this is something i wanted to tell you briefly why it has been like mentioned these two provisions will be on the same lines so i wanted to narrate you a story so that you can get the complete clarity first of all so now coming back to the point restriction on the name of insurer section 5 of the insurance act 1938 number 1 identical and similarly deceptive names prohibited now again uh, irda is no exception to my current story which i just narrated to you so an insurer shall not be registered by a name identical with that by which an insurer in existence is already registered or so nearly resembling that name as to be calculated to deceive now LIC is into business life insurance corporation now let's suppose someone starts writing life insurance uh, in place of life they start writing LYF rather than LIFE so life insurance company don't you think that's going to deceive obviously again that will be LIC so you are taking up the name of an existing player in the market and with the help of their name you are selling your product so that's going to deceive the people that's going to deceive the policy holders so that's just not allowed so an insurer shall not be registered by a name identical with that by which an insurer in existence is already registered or so nearly resembling that name as to be calculated to deceive except when the insurer in existence is in the course of being dissolved or signifies his consent to the authority now let's suppose uh, lic is about to getting close okay they are about to getting dissolved and they have willfully accepted the fact okay allow lyf life uh, allow them to do the business on our name with the name of basic tagline that is lic allow them okay and they have provided their significant consent to the authority that you should allow them then in that case irda won't be having any of the problem okay why because the existing player has already ensured that they have provided their consent so in that case that's allowed but in any other case apart from this the identical and similarly deceptive names are prohibited this thing has been mentioned under section 5 sub section 1 now moving on to the second part that is change of name if an insurer is registered with identical name this thing has been mentioned under section 5 sub section 2 if an insurer through in advertence okay or otherwise is without such consent as is posted registered by a name identical with that by which an insurer is already in existence whether previously registered or not is carrying on a business or so nearly resembling 
it has to be calculated to see then in that case the first mentioned insurer shall if called upon to do so by the authority on the application of the second mentioned insurer change his name within the time to be fixed by authority now this is something which i wanted to tell you let's suppose uh, without the knowledge of lic corporation uh, this lyf insurance corporation life corporation got into the existence and somehow people were not able to tra tra track that okay they were not just able to trace that figure okay earlier at the time of incorporation now they started doing their business later on life insurance corporation the main corporation gets to know about this fact and they got to know okay someone is doing the business on our name and making to like they are trying to forge provide kind of certain, some certain forgery and uh, doing the embezzlement with respect of our employees uh, our, our policy holders so uh, are are we going to stop them up absolutely you can so now in that case if lic of corporation of india limited files their application to irda that there is another company with lyf corporation okay and they are similarly doing the same kind of business and they are trying to cheat okay they are trying to deceive us by using our brand image and uh, like taking away our customers so in that particular case irda may ask this new corporation that is life lyf corporation to shut down their business or change their name as and when they want to so uh, like authority wants to so they'll provide them the time period within which you need to change that so change of name if an insurer already registered with identical name will happen so now i'll again go through the same lines in order to make you understand what i just brief you up with an example so if in case an insurer uh, without uh, through inadvertence or otherwise is without such concern registered by a name with that which with already an insurer is already in existence whether previously registered or not is carrying on a business which is so near resembling to be calculated to be deceiving then in that case the first mentioned insurer that is the new life lyf corporation if called upon to do so by the authority by irda on the application of second mentioned insurer so that is the lic corporation will change their name within a time to be fixed by the authority so this is something which has been like provided in the bare act language i provided to you a simplified kind of example with which you can understand the kind of meaning this particular section has i hope you guys got the complete clarity with respect to each and every provision related to section 5 that is restriction on the name of insurer can we move proceed perfect guys let's move forward with the next topic and that is about the requirement as to capital this thing has been mentioned under section 6 uh, this question was asked in ce final examination for may 2012 so guys now that you want to take up and or carry on your insurance business you need to have some amount of capital in your pocket obviously you need to no no authority is going to allow you to run an insurance business if in case you don't have money in your pocket let's suppose you sell off any other pro, uh, policy okay and somehow that person dies or fire broke out or any other buried insurance claim comes to your place whether you'll be able to pay them back or not they need to assess that so number 1 no insurer carrying on the business of life insurance general insurance or reinsurance in india shall be registered unless he has number 1 the paid up equity capital of rupees 100 crore in case of a person carrying on the business of life insurance or general insurance in india that is number 1 and paid up equity capital of rupees 200 crores in case a person is carrying on the business as a reinsurer so if in case your or your family members maybe like in the coming future or want to take up any of the insurance business then you need to have at least rupees 100 crores in your pocket if in case you want to carry on the business of life insurance or general insurance in india and if in case you want to take up the business of reish insurance in india then you need to have at least 200 crores now i am sure that you guys must be thinking about sir what does reinsurance mean you have already told us something related to life insurance general insurance marine fire but what is reinsurance so i'll tell you guys let's suppose you are taking up the business of life uh, re, uh, reinsurance what does happen in this businesses okay there comes a person to you and he wants to avail some of the benefit in terms of any of the insurance policy and you provide to them okay now you'll approach another person to cover your risk you covered 
that person's risk now you want someone to cover your risk as well maybe tomorrow if you'll have to pay that person now who is going to bear your risk now so you be uh, just to be on a better side you again contact a bigger broker a bigger kind of uh, bigger not broker bigger insurance broker house like a uh, bigger company who can support you if in case you are required to pay that person so that person who is going to support you up will be called as a reinsurer you what the insurer and since you also got the backing from another insurer that person is going to be called reinsurer now you'll be thinking why he'll be like requiring the double kind of paid up capital as unlike the normal life insurance and general insurance simple guys now since you'll be doing that business with that reinsurer definitely you are going to settle the amount in a higher price why because you also want to take and earn some of the profits with them so if you have to pay the other person 100 crore you'll be taking up at least 150 crore so that you can keep 50 crores in your pocket so that is something which will be like very much common with each and every kind of business so a reinsurer since he is going to take up the risk of you yours as well as uh, the third person directly indirectly in that phase so they need to have a higher amount of paid up equity capital so no insurer carrying on the business of life insurance general insurance or reinsurance in india shall be registered shall not be registered any other person with them unless uh, he has a paid up capital equity capital of rupees 100 crore if in case the person is carrying on the business of life insurance or general insurance or a paid up equity capital of rupees 200 crore if in case the person is carrying on the business of as a reinsurer i hope that's pretty much clear to each one of you this question was asked in c final examination for may 2012 as well so with this let's move towards the last topic of this presentation and this will be about the requirement as to the capital structure and voting rights and maintenance of registers of beneficial owners of shares this has been like stated under section 6a so are you guys all set moving forward towards this particular section it's an important one kindly understand each and everything that i'm going to deliver to you so the number one thing comes in in as the requirement as to the capital structure this thing has been mentioned under section 6a subsection 1 so what did it says it simply says that no public company shall carry on a life insurance business unless it satisfied all the conditions number one condition that the capital of the company shall consist of only ordinary shares and each one of which has a single face value so that's number one condition number two that except during any period not exceeding one year allowed by the company for payment of call on shares the paid up amount is the same for all the shares whether existing or new this is something which has been like mentioned in the bear act if i like simply have to tell you if you are like incorporating a public company and you want to take up or carry on any of the life insurance business then you need to satisfy two of the condition number one that you will be having only ordinary shares of single face value number one and the paid up amount needs to be same for all the shares whether existing or new is that clear guys i like brief you a very 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 simple language forget about bear act bear act is like for professionals okay bear act is for students as well but you uh, need to understand it with a basic clarity okay so as einstein says if you are not able to deliver something with ease and intelligence to each and every one then that means you haven't understood it at all so we'll keep it simple very simple very simple so the capital can be taken care in one case that is only ordinary shares of that that to of single value single face value and the paid up amount needs to be same for all the shares whether existing or new that is the requirement as to the capital structure this has been mentioned under section 6a subsection 1 moving on to the second thing that is the requirement as to the voting rights voting rights requirement has been like mentioned under section 6a subsection 2 what has been provided in that so that is something related to voting right which is that uh, the voting right will remain strictly proportionate to the paid up amount of the share held this is something which is in very simple language so you will have uh, the voting rights exactly and strictly in proportion to the paid up amount of the shares that you will be holding now moving on to the bear act language to make you understand what does bear act says so note with standing anything to the contrary contained in any law law for the time being in force or in the memorandum or articles of association but subject to the other provisions contained in the section forget about each and everything over here now the major part the voting right of every shareholder of any public company as therefore as aforesaid 
shall in all cases be strictly proportionate to the paid up amount of shares held by him so that's something which is crucial for you guys so the voting rights shall remain proportionate strictly proportionate to the paid up amount of shares that will be held by you and lastly about the issue of shares so the issue of shares to be ordinary shares only this thing has been mentioned in the section 6a no public company which carries on a life insurance business shall issue any shares other than the ordinary shares itself perfect guys with this i guess you got guys got complete clarity with respect to each and every kind of provision that i briefly made you understand requirement of as to capital structure requirement as to the voting right and issue of shares to be ordinary shares only i hope you guys got the complete clarity with respect to each and every provision which i taught you in this particular presentation do revise your topics time and again because that's going to ensure that whatever i'm teaching up to you that remains and retains in your mind that's something which is extremely essential with this i'll conclude my video with a dose of motivation and that will be relentlessness and discontent are the first necessities of progress this thing was mentioned by thomas alva edison perfect guys with this i'll say thank you on behalf of the edupedia world keep interacting via questions queries and youtube comment boxes i will love to solve each one of your queries and advances that is going to make me understand what do you guys expect out of us so i'm sure that you guys are loving our videos so uh, cheers to that and uh, do give us do give us a thumbs up so i'll see you in the next presentation with some good exciting topics where i'll be discussing with you but more relating to the insurance act 1938 stay connected